MG goes with Marsh, which actually is a pretty decent map for NF, so. Hopefully this doesn't come back to bite MG. All right, to the left side with red, green, and yellow, we've got MG. And to the right, and TL, blue, and pink, we've got TSM. So the benefit of having a Rano's player in the game, at least as a caster, is I get to see where all the town center positions are um, before the player scout. So I can quickly look at that. Looks like green's third is over here, almost near red, so wouldn't surprise me to see uh, green and red working together, although I think it's different players than last game, but nonetheless, we should see a Zeus-Isis combo to the top here. Okay, so again, we've got the Zeus players opposite each other, and then the Isis or Anos opposite of each other as well. Looks like a fairly gold heavy map. I noticed that right away when I saw this back town center for pink having two large gold mines at it. Uh, see the back town center for blue has gold. Teal's got two large gold mines within his tower site, so... Um, Generally, having that much gold would probably work into the more defensive lineup, which would probably be the Isis side, so. Um. Okay, normally that's not a really good relic, except for on this map. There's so much hunt on this map, and usually a lot of crocodiles all over the place as well uh, that having villagers one shot hunt you can then send like three or four villagers out and then to have them easily take down a whole pack of six or seven boars um, whereas normally you'd probably need five or six or more villagers to efficiently kill them so good relic for the map Another thing to note on this map is although it's not a water map in the traditional sense with fishing ships, you do have these waterways um, where you can build sh ships. Um, you can't build fishing ships because there are no fishing patches, but you can build military ships. So you could put arrow ships here in this choke point, or the big thing is later on, uh, seed ships to take down town centers that are within water range. So you can see this town center here and here. So yellow and pink's third town centers are both. This is kind of a weird map. I'm looking at the town centers on the bottom. And I guess this would be yellow's third. This would be pink's third. This would be blue's third. This would be green's third. This would be teal's third. And this would be red's third. It almost seems like there's an extra town center in MG's favor. Depending on who gets this one here. And the thing to notice is when you're busy playing the game, you don't always have that much time to look at the map like I just did and determine which town center belongs to which player. So if Teal just assumes this is his third town center and gives this up to Red, then Blue's going to be like, oh crap, all of a sudden I don't have a third town center. Because then that would leave this as his third or that, these two here, so... Um. 
not clear cut town center positioning on this map. So yeah, you see the heavy wood from yellow and then the limited gold and that usually indicates centaurs which we do see coming. See a pretty decent wall in coming from pink. He also walled in pretty early getting like this wall up. So. He's off to a good start defending it. And we see this counter centaur play coming out of pink, whereas yellow hasn't walled off, so um, this could actually work out in pink's favor. You also see the wall off from blue as well, so um, that's one of the things you usually have to watch out for, is even if you wall off well, um, your teammates could be left exposed, but um, Blue doing a good job walling in himself. Of course, they're both Greek, um, so it's relatively easier or normal for them to wall in. Whereas, I guess if you're an Atlantean player, instead of having one villager wall, you basically have to have three villagers wall, so Atlantean players typically won't wall as much, which could leave TL open to the Centaur raids. Should have just walled there. <laughs> so again, we're seeing a very boom heavy style out of Teal with the early second town center. Uh, also getting early second town center out of yellow. Blue as well and green so looks like we're gonna have a eco heavy game that could go later on i think the wild card there is the fast heroic from the isis player gotta be careful not to get caught here that sphinx is low and the priest uh, will just die to that many human units pretty quick re uh, okay Shockwave doesn't affect the heroes, but it will allow him to get that Sphinx kill. You always want to try to keep that alive, because when you do cast AE, the Eclipse Sphinx is really effective. Same go thing goes for your Scorpion Man. Makes AE all that stronger, but um, Shockwave, if we get rid of that, isn't that bad. It's interesting. Pink completely walled off everything but this middle section, so he's kind of inviting his opponent in, but... Uh, okay, so you see yellow poking teal with his centaurs. Okay, the AE comes down on the back town center. It's going to get one villager. This is where having that Sphinx would be so helpful. If you had an Eclipse Sphinx down there, you could take down this town center easily with the Sphinx. So he's sending the Scorpion Man. Okay, yellow coming back with the sense as well. With the Scorpion Man's help, he's going to be able to take down the Town Setter. And he probably could have done it without it. 
These villagers are trapped. 12 seconds on Eclipse still. Or Ancestors. The Scorpion Man's also here. If he can kill these six villagers, this is going to be horrible for Teal. You've got the two centaurs here to help too. Oh wow. With the Eclipse Scorpion Man, he's going to get this last one. That's like losing 18 villagers if you're Teal. And you lost the town center as well. Okay, I saw the siege workshop coming out, but no mid goal. I was like, what's he doing? The pre-siege spam's coming. That's what he's doing. So pre-siege spam when you've lost that many villagers is going to be extremely hard to stop. Teal is just going to need help. I don't think there's any way taking that great of an eco hit. Um, he'll be able to stop this pre-siege spam. So he's going to need help from his teammates. Pink, however, just has a centaur army, which does nothing against priests. Question is, what is blue doing? I don't see green spooming just as hard as blue, if not harder. I just don't see how Teal's going to be able to stop this, and his teammates aren't in a position to help him, so this could be game. Arrow almost just did Teal a favor there. Time's probably just helping Teal a bit, but I guess Arrow wanted to get this town center up. Interesting to see Blue move out and take this town center directly in the middle of the map, kind of in no man's land. Guessing Blue just used that seized fire to hold off this main fight. If he used it so this one villager could get that town center up, that'd be kind of awkward. Don't think anything in the bottom triggered it, so this town center was also secure, so had to be time for this battle. Even got the attack upgrade for the priests. Still no pierce upgrade for TL. Blue does have Pierce upgrade at least. So you see some other buildings coming up for red. This is good. You don't want to stay on pre-siege forever because eventually it'll become weak. But That said, Teal's so far behind that I don't think Rangers has to really worry about that.
Tails units are just melting. Still three siege towers up. Plenty of priests. Teal doesn't. Can't, Teal's losing his entire army and doesn't have the economy to remax. So this is bad for him. Green securing a fourth town center. Blue really needed to help um, Teal. The cavalry from Blue could have tanked the damage of the priests and killed the priests a lot more effectively than a Lanian army, but. Uh, Green out of Fang did a really good job of keeping Blue off of Red. He applied just enough pressure to Blue and fought him here that Blue couldn't really help Teal at all. See the 165 HP and 32% Pierce armor versus the 10%. Now blue comes in, but we've got green here as well. No bronze available. They all went underworld, so... Decent shockwave, but blue's army's gone, green's army's still there, and we still got a hell of a lot of priests, so... See the underworld coming out from pink to c come help, but meanwhile yellow uses the underworld to take out the back town center of teal. Pink's going to be able to do some decent damage with just cavalry and archers against the priest army. Um. That said, Teal just lost another town center. He's going to be losing a few more villagers. He's got all of his other villagers back here as well, so... I really like that town center take from Yellow as well. Also got the tower, tower push coming out from Red. See a little bit of pushback from TSM, but the problem is they still got yellow back here doing further damage. Yellow can actually secure this town center. Meanwhile, yellow is going to force them to react, which is going to allow this front push to become even stronger. Looks like red's low on wood, which is why we aren't seeing the siege towers needed to finish off the town center. You can see them on auto queue but not building. I miss this, but green with the hop raid as well as some siege can easily be able to take out that town center. Also a good 20 or so villagers here from blue as well. Looks like yellow's back pressure is getting cleaned up now that blue and purple reacted, but Teal's last town center is down to health, half health. Red's still got a bazillion priests here that'll just instantly kill anything Teal gets out. And there we go. So there we have it. 2-0 MG. Um... Last season's champions go on to the finals again this season. Um, this game really just came down to that nasty Ancestors Eclipse on Teal's back town center. Um, 
not only did he lose the town center, but he lost six villagers, which is like the equivalent of 18 normal set villagers um, to AE. Taking that big of a hit early on and then having to deal with pre-siege, which is really strong, especially if you're fighting from behind against it. Um, Teal never really stood a chance, and then um, pink and blue were kind of just cancelled out by yellow and green, so uh, without help, Teal wasn't going to get back in the game, and that's what we saw. Again, going back to the Civ choice where the Isis just in a team game, especially a 3 versus 3, it's just generally the better option over an Aranos. We saw that in both games. Pretty much was the difference in the series.